everybody, my name is Mr. Born Isaac Barry from Barry's Highland Slab, and today we're going to be doing integration by parts. So, this is an intermediate calculus concept, and we're going to learn what it means. So, when you're integrating something, but you can't use a u sub, and you're too lazy to look at a, an integral calculator up online, integration by parts is going to be your best friend. So what is integration by parts? Well, let's take, for example, x cosine x. And of course, you can't forget the with respect to x. So, now as you see, we have two little subparts here. That's what you're going to see in most questions that require integration by parts. So, this stems from a little formula that says that d, or the derivative of the product of two functions, u times v, is equal to the, is equal to u, or the derivative of u, with the, uh, sorry, oh, yeah. The derivative of u with respect to v plus the derivative of v with respect to u. Back to u. So, now we're going to take that v du, put it on the other side. We get u dv. Now we integrate both sides of this equation. We get the integral of duv minus the integral of v du is equal to the integral of u dv. Now you might notice this d and this integral cancel out because derivative and antiderivatives, of course, must cancel out. So the formula for this is the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Wow, that's a lot of letters being thrown around there. So, there's this little handy thing called LIPET. And it's an acronym for what you should do when integrating by parts. Specifically, it tells you which part of your, inter uh, yeah, the <laughs> which function, which part of the function that you're integrating should be labeled as U and which part of the function should be labeled as DV. God, I can't speak English. Okay, so Lipet says this. One, logarithmic functions. Two, uh, inverse trigs. So like uh, cosec, sec, and cotan. The P stands for polynomials, the E stands for exponentials, and the T stands for trig. It's like the advanced version of PEMDAS. So, this tells you which function you should make a U. So, the higher up something is in this acronym, then you should make it U. Now, X can be viewed as an exponential function and uh, because it's x to the first power and cosine x can be uh, is obviously a trig function i guess you could also call x a monomial but i don't really see the point in that so that means that we are going to make u into x you're a variable now and dv is cosine x. So we have to now find the derivative of u and of the original part of v for this to work. Because you have uv and then v du. So you've got to find both of these values. Taking the derivative of x is just 1 times dx. And taking the integral of v here gives you, well, the integral of cosine x is mm, sine x. I, I'm doing it backwards. All right? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh my god, <laughs> so confused with my trig integrals. Okay, so 
now what we're going to do is this. So let's plug it in into this handy formula we have right here. So we have the integral of x cosine x, and I guess we would also say cosine x dx. I don't really see the point in that. Oh yeah, I forgot. You gotta include this little clump as part of it. So this is cosine x dx, and it's removed when we take the integral. Sorry, just a little clarification. It's more symbolism or notation than anything. So the integral of x cosine x dx is equal to u times v, what is u, x, v is sine x, so you get x sine x minus the integral of v du sine x times dx. So now, the integral of sine x dx is obviously minus cosine x. So let's just uh, do this. So the integral of x cosine x dx equal to x sine x minus the integral of this is minus cosine x. Oh yeah, I forgot you gotta remove the dx. And so that means that the integral of x cosine x dx is equal to x sine x plus cosine x. Now, hopefully you understand this method. Now, I'm just going to show you a miscellaneous problem uh, that I wanted to make this video for because I solved it in the most illegal way that I found possible. So, here it is. I'm going to solve the integral of e to the 2x times sine of 2x with integration by parts. All right, so you plug this in over here. Sine 2x is a trig function, so that means that e2x must be u no matter what. You are now e2x. And then sine 2x is dv. So that means that du is going to be 2e to the 2x. That's pretty trivial. And then v, you actually got to think hard on this one, but you got to take whatever's inside this little guy, and then take the reciprocal of the derivative. The derivative of 2x is 2, taking the reciprocal is 1 half, and then the derivative of sine x normally is minus, no, the integral of sine x normally is minus cosine x. So you still gotta put that minus, then we have cosine 2x. Kind of like an integral chain rule. You could check, cause taking the derivative of this, you have uh, the chain rule, so the 2 goes over here, canceling out the 1 half, and the derivative of cosine 2x would be minus sine 2x, and that cancels out the negative. All right, so now we've got our u, our v, our du, and our dv. So let's substitute them into the formula. We know that this is going to be equal to u times v, so e to the 2x times minus 1 half cosine 2x. I'm just write the cosine 2x a little bit farther away. And then that's subtracted from the integral of v du. So we have the integral of minus 1 half cosine 2x times 2e to the 2x. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit. So this is now just minus cosine 2x dx and oh no e to the 2x and if you really wanted to you could take the minus one out of there because it's a constant and make this a positive so now we've got to find what this is oh yeah i forgot this part that's tacked on on the end using integration by parts as well so the integral of cosine 2x e 2x dx is equal to, well, we have to find our u, and once again, it's gonna be e2x, and dv is cosine 2x, and so du is equal to 2e to the 2x, and v is equal to minus one half, no, 
12. It's positive 1 half, actually, because you're taking it for cosine, sine 2x. Let me just verify that. Yeah, that should be good. So, we've got our u, our v, our du, and your, our dv. You might notice that these almost loop around. So, what can we do about that? Well, let's see. We are going to use that to our advantage, but later. e to the 2x times 1 half sine 2x is uv, and then u half, this is the really funny part, minus the integral of what is v times du, 1 half sine 2x times e to the 2x. Do you see what's up with this? What I can do with this is unimaginable. Do you know why? Cancel, cancel. You might notice that this is the exact same as the original integral that we were trying to find. So, Let's call this i for integral. Then we know that this is also i, of course. So the integral that we're trying to find, i is equal to minus 1 half e to the 2x cosine 2x. And of course, we have this boring integral right here. But remember, that's equal to this part. We have minus negative, uh, no, not negative, 1 half e to the 2x sine 2x minus i. You see this? So now, it should be pretty much trivial to find i, because you get i is equal to, oh wait, sorry, ah, I think I messed something up. Oh wait, yeah, that's a plus sign, not a minus sign, sorry. And so, we get minus 1 half e 2x cosine 2x plus 1 half e to the 2x sine 2x minus i. So now let's gather that all together. i, we're taking this to the other side, i plus i is 2i, is equal to, well, these both have a denominator of 2, so let me just write that down e to the 2x sine 2x, wait, isn't there a cosine? In, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting paranoid. And then minus e to the 2x cosine 2x over 2. And now that means that i is simply the same thing over 4. If you wanted to Simplify that even further, that's e to the 2x times sine 2x minus cosine 2x over 4, and that is equal to the integral of e to the 2x sine 2x dx. That felt so illegal that I don't even know what to say. The math police are probably going to pull me over, so please don't hurt me. But thank you everybody for watching.